Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Gravity Falls Season 2, Episodes 15 and 17 through 20. Yeah, we got a little out of order last time. Thanks for not killing us. Yeah, I kind of had the playlist out of order. Whoops. And since I've been working really hard to avoid spoilers, I had no clue. And I didn't realize until afterwards when I was going through and making links to the last video when it was like, wait a minute, this doesn't matter. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, so we finally made it to the finale stretch. Mm -hmm. I'll let Ember start. That was fun. Uh, interesting that everyone agreed that it was called Weird Mageddon. Mm -hmm. Also, unicorns. I swear, in, outside of the MLP universe, there are more stories about unicorns being brats. <laughs> uh, including some of my children's short stories. Might get to those eventually in Ember's reading room. It's from the Unicorn Treasure if you guys want to look early. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it's mainly because in most stories they're written, at least in the older stories, as these pure things only after pure people, but... Realistically, they're only horses after virgin women, so yeah. I was like, really, what makes them any different than the satyrs? Though I think it's the fact that on average, I think from what I remember hearing, unicorns are usually saving virgin women from other creatures. Yes, they're often protecting the virgin women. Yeah, that is just a, such an interesting thing. Yeah, going back to the actual episode, I love the fact that at the end of the episode, they beat up the unicorns to get the hair. Mm hmm And also loved how awful some of Arabella's et cetera, et cetera, posing was. Because you're like, oh, this beautiful unicorn. And then she goes to pose in front of the rainbow, and you're like, oh, this beautiful unicorn. And then, ooh, she just ruined it. Yeah, what happened to her face? <laughs> Because usually what bothered me is her mouth looked weird and she's like, ah! Yeah. Reminded me a little bit of some of the mouth uh, drawings from the special unicorn. So, yeah, she was a little bit special. And I love how her friends ruined the whole thing. Are you doing that racket again? A racket would imply that there's money being exchanged. Yeah, because other than annoying the heck out of Mabel, she wasn't really getting anything from saying that Mabel wasn't pure of heart and couldn't have a lock of her mane. I also love the only thing our horns can do is light up and do rave music. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, that was awesome. We, we could have used them at the last party. Also, um, here, invitation. Come to my birthday party. Do the music. It'll be awesome. <laughs> uh, and since the Blight Eye Society is disbanded, you don't have to worry about people getting their minds erased after the party because the unicorns were there. Also moving on to Dipper's part of the story, I kind of actually noticed that whole flying saucer thing from like the very first episode that particular wide shot was showing. I was like, you know, I think a UFO crashed through those mountains. <laughs> and the whole valley was actually created by the UFO crashing. And I love how Ford, he actually said, well, we don't know whether the alien craft is what caused the weirdness or if the weirdness attracted the alien craft. Yeah, because it would be hard to prove. Even if the weirdness happened at the same time that the alien craft crashed, you couldn't prove that the weirdness isn't what caused the alien, crash, alien craft to crash. And apparently alien craft to crash is a tongue twister. <laughs> Spends the next five minutes editing just this one sentence. Yes. Could be worse. You could be trying to say... Chester chooses chestnuts, cheddar cheese, and chewy chives. He chews them as he chooses them. <laughs> Isn't Ember awesome, everyone? Isn't she awesome? <laughs> Name that reference in the comments below. <laughs> oh, uh. I didn't finish it, though, and you'll probably edit it out anyways. <laughs> I didn't think I'm going to leave it in. Thank you very much. With your permission, of course. Now let's continue back to the episode. Yes. So, yeah, we McGucket and I used to raid this ship all the time. It's perfectly safe. Unless somehow we managed to trigger the security system. Press a button, any button. None of them work. Yeah, it had nothing to do with the buttons, though. Didn't you notice they walked across a security beam? 
Yes, I know, but oh, everything's defunct. Don't worry is the first sign you should worry. Yeah, especially since he apparently ran into those guards before. Or else he knew about them from the studying that he and McGucket did of the ship and the language and the blueprints and everything. Mm, that's a fair point. And magnet gun. Uh, that was kind of cool. Especially with Dipper attempting to figure out how to use it. Stunk! Um, a little help here! <laughs> I also like duct taping it to his hand to save Ford. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Very. It's like, yeah, there's no way I'm letting go of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, once again, the rift between the twins. Widens and widens as they explore different avenues and always remember to turn your walkie-talkie off mm -hmm. from broadcasting. Though I could have sworn you had to hold down the button when you were talking. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm mixing up episode 15 and 17, I believe. You think after last time we're going to manage to do much of anything in order other than pre and post Bill Cipher? Yeah, I'm, I'm just letting people know I think I'm mixing up the two. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm going through my memory going, because I know Dipper and Ford went on to do something while Mabel went on to take care of the unicorns, but the episode I'm thinking of is when they go to raid the ship is also when, oh yeah, it's the episode just before we're going to get it. So I'm crossing things because... Poor Mabel during that episode. Her dreams of the future being crushed by reality. Also finding out that her two new best friends won't even be able to make it to her party, which is also the last day she's going to be there. Mm-hmm. Though, I'm sorry. Grinda, cancel on Marius. Big deal. I understand not being able to escape your parents' plans for band camp, Candy, but mm -hmm. come on. Marius is in to Grinda. Grinda can say no, or say, come to the party instead. Look, this is my friend's party, you're coming. Because she's Grinda. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the unicorn episode, only people with deep, only these deep chanting. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you ten bucks nothing happens. I'll take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I love how immediately once they get in there, Mabel's hand goes up and... Uh, <laughs> Pay up. Which right there, okay, how pure of heart. You're like, immediately pay up on the bet. But purity is relative. Mm-hmm. And when you say pure of heart, what do you actually mean? Do you mean the person's actually pure of heart, as in their hearts doesn't have any plaque in it, or...? Do you mean that they're always inclined to do the right thing, even when it's difficult? That they go around forgiving their enemies? I mean, there's a lot of open to interpretation there. Yeah, it's like, are you chaotic good? Neutral good? Are, are we talking like young Goku innocent, you know, able to ride on the flying Nimbus? I mean, come on, what's the criteria here? But yeah, I definitely got those two episodes mixed up, but still, Mabel Corrin. The episode was actually the, called The Last Mabel Corrin. Nice reference. Yes, to Peter S. Beagle's The Last Unicorn. Awesome book. Yep. Beautiful movie. Awesome book. But yeah, that spaceship was kind of cool. I wonder how big it was. They showed a wide shot, and I'm not quite sure if that actually showed the entirety of the spaceship or what. Because you can certainly see the dome part of the spaceship. And it's at least as big as the hole it made in those two mountains. Yes, so pretty big. Ah. So, any more about these episodes, or should we move on to Weird Mageddon? Why don't we just, well, a little bit about um, the whole fact that Ford was originally tricked by Bill, and that's why he built the portal. Also, Dipper rationalizing, looking into Ford's mind to find out what else was being taken. I mean, the rationalization on that was so insidious that I almost wanted to blame Bill. Hmm. Interesting way to put it. I just thought of someone trying to rationalize things to the point of like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna do this. Yeah, well, Dipper even says, wow, I'm really good at rationalizing things. Well, sometimes you don't realize something until you actually say it out loud. Yeah, but that was something I was considering because beware of Bill has kind of been the byword. Oh yeah, and I finally remembered when they were going for the unicorn, they were in his secret room trying to encrypt Dipper's brain because Ford already has a dink 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 metal plate in his head. Yes. 
So how would that have worked if Ford had actually accepted Bill's handshake and allowed Bill into his mind? Would it have worked? Did they really need to do the fake out that they did at the end? Because would Bill have been able to get in? Hmm. Maybe we can go over that question again once we get to that episode. Yeah, and I like how they did that scene where Dipper was questioning if he was possessed by Bill or not. Mm hmm That was a really tense moment, especially since they had the light in such a way that you couldn't see his eyes. Yes, yeah, so you really couldn't tell. Mm hmm Hmm. And I love how the apparently the memory erasing device doesn't work on him because of the middle plate. And apparently the middle plate is either covering the entirety of his brain or what, because he knocked on one side, but then he got shot in the forehead. I'm guessing it has to cover the entirety of his brain. So did he, that's another thing, did he self-install? Or did he have McGucket? <laughs> I don't think he could have had McGucket do it because he wasn't wary of Bill until after McGucket was pulled into the portal. Mm. Yeah, that's a question that, I don't know if I actually want the answer to. <laughs> I'm not sure I do either. Did someone say unicorn hair? No, no, actually, no one didn't. Oh, well, that would have been nice. That would have been awesome, though. Here's the unicorn hair. We're covered in tears. And and they finally just gave us this treasure just to go away. And Stan comes running through money. Grab. <laughs> that, nice, nice work, Stan. Yep. You just stole money from your little niece. Your darling little Mabel. <laughs> He may love her, but that doesn't mean he won't steal from her. I mean, really, right in front of her? That blatantly? She didn't seem to mind. Well, she was after the hair. Also, there was still money left. Mm -hmm. Now, weird Mageddon. Yes, because Mabel was hurt and vulnerable and left the shielded protection of the mystery shack. Mm -hmm. And Bill went and found someone that he could use. From the future. Yeah, it's like, how much work was it to track down that time traveler, manage to possess him? Well, once you manage to possess him, it's kind of everything else is moot because you just have possessed him. Use the time travel equipment, go back, trick Mabel, mm -hmm. and you're good. Also, I wonder what happened to that time travel guy. Because we just see him disappear after Time BB and a lot of time forces go poof. Yes, because he definitely took himself someone else. If I was him, I would have gone backwards, not forwards, because it would be easier to live in a world before Bill escaped than go to the future and hope that somebody beat him. Hmm, that's a good point. Or if that thing has dimension hopping, hop to a different dimension. Ah, uh, then Mabel gets taken away. Dipper and Ford try to defeat him. And... Dipper and Wendy go, we need to save the day. This is also where we get more awesome Wendy. <laughs> because Wendy is like, you're going to let us go. Why? Because I'm going to break this guy's arm, then do this, then do this. <laughs> and then she proceeds to do everything she said. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a corduroy. <laughs> yeah. Kicktail, strong, strong, strong woman. Very strong woman. Could probably Bench press half the guys there. I mean, all at once. <laughs> Probably because her father has her work out all the time. Yes, and, you know, the post-apocalyptic training, which, you know, came in handy. Mm-hmm. Instead of Christmas. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> well, that makes sense with her father. Yeah. But, yeah. I love how Seuss becomes the wandering helper of the wasteland. Very fitting for him. Mm-hmm. Also, a couple of Easter eggs during the chase between Wendy and Dipper and the... The prisoners turned road warrior gang. Yes. We have a Speed Racer reference when they go anime. And we actually see two of the voice actors portraying their characters live action style. Yes. So that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Because I would have thought that going through the weirdness bubbles could have been a lot more potentially damaging. But apparently once you get out from the other side, you revert back to normal. So, hey, that works. Uh, I also love how every time they said roll out, you would start giggling. I couldn't help it. 
it was so Transformers, so 80s, so Jason the Wheel Warriors, I couldn't help it. Uh, and I probably skimmed over some of the points you wanted to go over, so why don't we rewind a little bit? <laughs> well, Bill's very gentle handling of Mabel. Here, I'll just put her to sleep and put her in this nice fantasy bubble. Dipper, on the other hand, hey, you guys, have a treat. Eat the kid. Huh? What? Yeah. I mean, was that, like, part of the deal with Gideon? Because we didn't hear what the specific deal was with Gideon. Probably. Because Gideon would want her kept it safe, and he did say Bill gave her to him. Yes, but in this prison bubble that he can't get into. So I have her, but I don't have her. Good job, Gideon. And he kind of semi-turns over a new leaf by the end. A, a little bit. You know, he, he has a change at the most useful point of... Uh, dang it, the stupid Pines twin has a point. Dipper, make sure you tell her what I've done. And he, and he goes, of course. This show is just so well done. You could tell so much was planned from the beginning. It's crazy. Uh, and now we dive into Mabel's prison. <laughs> Yeesh. Guys, I'm not actually in a prison. This place is wonderful. No, no, it's not. We get little hints of all is not as it seems. Anytime someone, i.e. Dipper, resists. <laughs> The glimpses of the trees and how the fake windy mm -hmm. reverts. And how everyone else kind of immediately falls for the, hey, here's what you want. You've always wanted to do this. Uh, I had a little trouble with that with Seuss because Seuss had an actual opportunity to use the time wish to see his father. But this fake father that he knows is fake is presented to him. And he says, I know this is fake. But I still got to do it. Dipper and Mabel are right there needing your help. And you are going to go leave to play catch with your fake dad? Seuss, come on. You are like loyalty incarnate. What happened? Hmm. Well, the pull of that particular world is so tempting. You know, whatever you want, anytime you want it. Uh, I do love how Wendy's is to ride a monster truck through the high school and glue a plunger to the principal's forehead. She must have been one of those fun troublemakers. Because I was kind of one of the quiet kids. All the teachers liked me. I had lots of geeky friends in high school. We kept ourselves away from all the popular people. And because we found it easier to eat our lunches in the quiet areas in the back where the trees are and they had nice benches. Also, we could do things like play Pokemon. And I had a friend who knew all 150 original Pokemon's cries from the video games. Now back to the episode. Yes, well, the relief that, you know, Wendy feels seeing that her friends are okay, and they're not, but hey, fantasy realm, and to be able to do something she always wanted to do. Because they both say they'll be right back, and they don't come back. I understand that the world's insidious, which makes it even more amazing that Dipper's able to resist. Well, he's very grounded in his view of reality. And Despite all the weirdness that goes on in Gravity Falls. And it's very different than Mabel's reality. So him living in a world that's primarily his sister's gave him the edge. Because he has such a drastically different view of reality than hers. And she's also very accepting of the strange and fantastical. Compared to his acceptance of the strange and fantastical, which is very scientific and very hard. Also, they were looking at the world from a different perspective. Mabel, oh, I just woke up here and there's everything that I want. For Dipper, no, this is a prison that my sister was locked in. By Bill Cipher, so anything in here is already a trick. Yes, so it's automatically a trick and it's automatically dangerous. No matter what my sister thinks, I need to get her out of here because as safe as this may seem to her, it is incredibly dangerous. So that gave him the mental advantage to fight off any temptation the world would toss his direction. Not to mention that the world had Wendy give the wrong signal. That's the same signal the shapeshifter used. I would have started running too. So they break out of Mabel's prison after a trial that give us more backstory. 
nice way to fit it in and was also a bit reminiscent of some scenes from Inside Out with the two different perspectives of the same event with joy and sadness with joy mainly remembering the di when Riley was held up and tossed by the team and sadness remembering that that was after they lost the big game from sadness came joy and that's what the sets of memories that were presented in the trial because the ones presented by oh my god how many times do we get to see these rock band boys <laughs> i think they're actually still in the world yes they do seem to be real now and they have the that nice little philosophical bit mm -hmm. which i can't repeat it was kind of too long and complicated i would have to listen to it a couple of times yes and it was an actual quote i believe mm -hmm. about the existentialism of reality and always fun stuff mm -hmm. just the differentiation of yes there was this bad thing but then something good came of it also, it was nice that the giant waddles was actually waddles, which meant that they could escape and that their escape vehicle wasn't turning on them. Also, who wants waffle guards? I don't know, but Seuss was certainly having fun. Come on, man! He did it. He's holding a thing of syrup. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of the crying breakfast friends from Steven Universe. Which we should be getting more episodes of that soon. Oh, and we skipped over some more uh, Disney self-referencing mm. when Wendy and Mabel were talking in the high school gymnasium. Oh, yeah. A direct reference to the high school musical movies. Yeah, I thought my life was going to be like something like a musical. <laughs> like, no, it's horrible. When, when you dis she, they actually described it's a darker version of what actually happens. But yeah, high school's kind of like that. <laughs> Just a little bit. But that was the thing. You had nice, more Disney self-referencing. You know, the 80 million Transformers references that all basically boil down to roll out. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of roll out, you pointed it out to me again and I noticed it. The gear shifter. The head on it. Yes. Looked exactly like the leader of the Blind Eye Society. Only less real. Mm -hmm. And Bill Cipher's throne of people. To me, that felt like two references. A Game of Thrones reference, except, you know, it wasn't made out of swords. And a reference to the second Unico movie, where people are turned into stone and formed into a wall. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it was a reference to either of those. I think it was more just a general reference to what kind of creature Bill represents. Also, to those who go, wow, this series got dark real quick. Actually, it's been dark pretty much the entire time. It has its happy moments and its fun moments. But if you really think about the world of Gravity Falls, it's a pretty dark and normal place. Notice I said dark and normal because the real world's kind of dark. Only if you look at it that way. A lot of its perspective, and I think that was the thing, is for people who weren't looking at the clues and looking at a deeper level in an ongoing story instead of one-off episodes, they weren't expecting Weird Mageddon. I wasn't necessarily expecting Weird Mageddon, but I knew Bill, oh my god, Bill. Mm -hmm. He's a very dark character. Extremely. He's like Discord outside of the My Little Pony universe, if someone else wrote him, basically. I could see that, because just spreading as much weirdness and chaos as possible and not really caring who it hurts as long as it's amusing. And interesting that he was stuck in Gravity Falls. Interesting that the Mystery Shack Unicorn spell was protecting from all of Bill's weirdness. And specifically Bill's weirdness. Gravity Falls weirdness was allowed because the gnomes were in there, the manatar, the uh, many-headed bear. Hmm, that's a good point. I'd just like everyone to know that we're out of toilet paper. What? Did I miss something? Uh, I love how Stan becomes de facto mayor. Well, my shack, my rules. Mm -hmm. Also, the real mayor has been captured. Yep, and turned into stone. Mm-hmm. Which was apparently a load-bearing human. I wasn't really expecting them to all revert to an organic state when they were pulled apart. I was just expecting it to all fall apart. 
Mm. Ah, and poor Gideon, sentenced to dance forever. Again, I'm so tired. <laughs> ah. And Bill's torturing of Ford to try and get the equation that would let him out of Gravity Falls. Very interesting that Bill needed that handshake to get into Ford's head. Where was that when Gideon made the deal with Bill to have Bill go into Stanley's mind to get the combination to the safe? There was no deal between Stanley Pines and Bill Cipher. So how was Bill able to get access to Stan's mind in our first battle with Bill? I think it's because it was part of someone else's deal with him. But if that's the case, why couldn't Bill make a deal with any of his lackeys where the deal was get into Ford's mind and get the equation? Hmm. Maybe it has to be a human. He had a whole throne full. Hmm. Grab a Northwest. They would have made the deal. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'll probably have an answer sometime later after we're done with the recording. Just that was something that bothered me. It's like, okay, if Bill can't get to you without a deal, how did he get to Stan? Because his deal was with Gideon. So we see Gideon's reaction to making the deal and that handshake of it's a deal. Dangerous words. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing with the circle and the symbols. Okay, so that was an ancient set of emblems. So ice chest how? It was an ice chest. It was an ice bag, but still, yeah. But ancient symbols written on walls are usually prophesied by people who see the future and don't understand it. At least that's how the books usually have it and... Realistically, it's just people misinterpreting what other people wrote through bad translation, but still. Okay, so that explains that, but it seems like all of the symbols are equally weighted. So once again, out of the three that Bill ran into early, Pine Tree, Shooting Star, and Question Mark, Shooting Star seems to be the one he's most concerned about. Hmm. Because locked up in a separate prison, kept happy. Even when Dipper managed to escape, he was like, ah, no big deal. Because, you know, the journals were gone. And Bill only seemed to consider Dipper a threat because of the journals. And it was nice that they didn't take the easy way out. And they, I mean the authors, that, oh yeah, this circle thing isn't going to work because the tw Elder Pines twins can't stop fighting. Mm-hmm. Because they haven't learned their lesson and they haven't really forgiven each other. Because they never spent any time on that during the whole time he's been back. No. The time that Ford's been back has mostly either been spent alone or with Dipper. He hasn't really spent time with Mabel or Stan. So there's not as much of a connection there. Also, it's interesting that both sets of Pines twins had the lesson. Because in the episode with the crystal that could grow and shrink things... Mabel and Dipper temporarily lost to Gideon because they couldn't manage to get along for five minutes. And then they made up and they won. Mm -hmm. Here, the Elder Pines twins made up and they won. Yep, I think it's because the twins are both halves of each other in a way. They both have skills the other does not. So it strengthens them both when they're together and working together as a team. Like how when they were discussing when they were in the cage. Yeah, you would have seen him for the trickster he was. Yeah, yes. Stan would have seen right through that, big time. But yeah, that's painful. Because everyone wants to be told that they're special. That, you know, they're worthy of help and worthy of respect. And that what they can do is going to make a difference. That's heady stuff. And it's really, we, we have a basic human need to be liked. It's part of the whole social creatures we are. Yes. And the one thing that they can agree on is, oh my goodness, Bill's, we can't let him hurt the kids. Glad you two can agree on something. You may hate each other as family, but the younger generation, no, we love them. <laughs> they're just kids. They're just kids. God, they're just kids, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a nice trick at the end. 
which you saw coming. Yes, because it was so incredibly obvious. I mean, they're twins, and Stanley has been pretending to be Stanford for the past 30 years. And even the phrasing of the deal, you know, he doesn't say by name. He says, my brother and the kids. So the phrasing of the deal is completely legit because it's Stanley who's doing it. Master con artist. Yep. The only way to con a con is another con is with another con. Yes. Set a thief to catch a thief, etc. And the emotions in this episode. Ah. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't going quite there yet. I, I liked when Bill came in and it was so quiet and then he opens the door. Uh-oh. Yeah. It's like, oh, hi. <laughs> ah. Would have thought you recognized the place. <laughs> And, you know, the whole, the mindscape catching fire. And actually getting to punch Bill out. I mean, we got to do that with the Mystery Shack robot, but it was so much cooler in the mindscape. <laughs> Which reminds me, why do they always go for the eye? <laughs> because you're a triangle with an eyeball. It's obvious. Mm-hmm. I forgot to comment on how awesome the giant monster fight was. Also, apparently... Brenda and Candy are drift compatible. Apparently so. Yes, I've referenced that movie twice in these recordings. Also, interesting what was used to make up the Mystery Shack robot. Because I could see using parts from McGucket's other robots. Why a dinosaur? I know, why not a dinosaur? But seriously, why a dinosaur? Probably because. Also, no gun swords. <laughs> You gotta have gun swords on this thing, man. <laughs> I've seen a lot of anime, and trust me, you're gonna want gun swords. What's this anime you're talking about? We have much to discuss, my friend. And the Evangelion reference. Ah, oh, yes. And lovely reference Achilles heel, that there was a portion of the shack robot that was not shielded. And, oh, gee, if I take out its leg. Mm-hmm. It was actually the arms and the legs, which were actually outside the field. It was only the main house that was actually inside the protective bubble. Yes, but the legs were the better attack, because if the robot can't move... I'm just saying that's what was actually outside the field, and Bill noticed it because his hands touched. Yes, and if I had been designing the Mystery Shack robot, there wouldn't have been legs, there would have been tank treads. <laughs> Wouldn't have made the giant mystery shack robot. I would have made the giant mystery shack tank. <laughs> but then you wouldn't have this epic mech fight. If I was in the universe, I wouldn't be worried about having the giant epic ma mech fight with the theme music playing. I would be worried about staying alive. But still, giant mech fight. Yes, giant mech fight. Awesome. Which apparently was just a distraction for them to get in and rescue Ford. Gi giant mech fight is pretty distracting. Yes, especially when your eye gets rubbed out. Yes. Why is it always the eye? You guys have any idea how long this takes to regenerate? And then later, again, the eye got, I just fixed that. <laughs> yeah, I know that hurts because I've done it to myself <laughs> multiple times. No, I've done it to myself on accident multiple times. Like, wow, Mabel. Wow. Yeah, it hurts. And also, depending on the spray paint, it's really hard to get out. You might have to go to the emergency room. And probably should anyways, but still. Yeah, so please nobody do that. Yeah, bad idea. If your Mabel cosplay includes a can of spray paint, please make sure it's a prop one and not an actual can of spray paint. So where to next? Ah, uh, well, I, I sidetracked you from the emotions, so let's go ahead and go there. The emotions. As the internet calls it, the feels! Yeah, because... We, we basically erase Stanley to erase Bill. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that particular scene, though, you can actually see Bill reverting to, like, previous stages of his evolution or something. Yes, going through the different design manifestations. And you really don't get the feels until when you know his mind's being erased, he grabs the photo and just smiles. Yeah. And then it starts to really hit you, and you're like, it's like, he, he knows right now, and right now it's worth it, but once it's over, he's not going to have a clue. He's mm. not going to have a clue who he is, or why he did it, or why it mattered. Just, ugh. Especially at the end of a series, you're like, ugh. Because not only do you, you're getting the, oh, the end of this wonderful series, you're also getting the end of, oh, you're also getting, oh. 
One of the main characters. Oh! <laughs> I, I, I thought they had plot armor. Oh, wait, it's the end of the series. Dang it! Who are you guys? Nice place you got here. Oh, no, no, this is familiar. It seems like this chair knows my butt, though. <laughs> uh, and I love how it's the picture book that brings all the memories back. And if you really paid attention, they actually gave you clues that this could work. The memory eraser can be undone by showing someone clues of their memories. Because we saw that with McGucket, because when we watched what was actually the materials that came from the gun in the Blind Eye Society episode, it wasn't the actual memories that were stored by the device. It was a recording about the memory. So showing someone something about it, because we saw it at work with McGucket, he got some clues from the footage that they got from the device, and then he made more progression throughout the remainder of the series. Yep, and the reason he still act crazy is because he lived most of his life that way after that point and those memories were still intact as well so he got his own memories back plus the new memories so he still stayed the way he act because that's the way he kind of grew up yes it's the way he behaved for about 30 years so it makes sense that a lot of that behavior is still ingrained even if with the return of his older memories he wants to make changes, he's still having to fight against X number of years of behavior patterns. The, the only thing with the recovery of Stanley's memories was that it went so fast. We should really say the start of it. We don't know how much longer it took for him to actually recover all of his memories, but he started recovering major parts of it like, stupid pig! Like, Waddle, stop it! They're like, wait, he knows Waddle's name? Mm-hmm. Like, it's working, guys! Keep going! Like, Zeus, just because I have amnesia, don't use this as an excuse to try and get a raise. It's like, wow. Because those were two things that were not yet mentioned in the scrapbook. And did he... Well, we know that he did because of the later interaction between Stanley and Stanford. But it's like, would the scrapbook be enough to jog pre-Dipper and Mabel memories? And obviously it was. And I also think that the reason it was so effective at this point to get everything back is because it happened so shortly after the memory eraser. If it was longer, it would probably take a longer period of time for the memories to come back. But since the memories were recoverable, does that mean that Bill was truly destroyed? I think he was either mostly destroyed, completely destroyed. We don't know because... I haven't really done any research on it, but I don't remember the creator of the show saying that he was going to do anything after this with this series. But if you could recover the memories, then wouldn't recovering memories relating to all the things that happen with Bill possibly resurrect Bill because it's all part of the mindscape? Yeah, I just don't know. Like I said, I would have to do more research, which I didn't bother to do. I just double checked on one of the Easter eggs. Specifically, that it was the voice actors actually doing the live action scene with Dipper and Wendy. Mm -hmm. And then I love the ending when Dipper and Mabel were getting on the bus and, and the uncles stepped in to get Waddles back with her. Yep. Like, if I had to put up with this pig the entire summer, your parents do too. So there are no animals. Brass knuckles and a ray gun. Yes. Come on, you can have the front seat. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, wow, that that was pretty hardcore. It was just show the brass knuckles, pull the jacket aside, nicely holstered weapon. Wow, that's like, I know Stanley referenced in the Hamwich episode, wow, that's like mob boss quality. But you know, that was like mob boss quality right there, because it was all for family. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, really enjoyable series. Happy, sad that it's over. Mm-hmm. And I feel better after seeing the finale of this time after the first time because i watched it the first time by myself and it took me a while to peep back up i always get a little sad after the ending of a really good series but i recovered pretty quickly this time thanks to the fact that ember was nearby and i could talk with her almost instantly about it and start going over everything again yes uh gentle viewers please remind me not to binge watch and then stay up half the night talking about what i've binge watched yeah still fun though
Yes, yes, just very tiring the next day. Quite. I'm not uh, that much of a night owl. Yeah. Uh, shall we wrap things up? Yes. So, really great series. You know, I knew when I was seeing the cosplayers there had to be something good. Now I know. And now that we've completed the series and I don't have to worry about spoilers anymore, it's off to Wikipedia. Uh, one last question before we do our outro. Who was your favorite character? It can be characters. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, in what character qualities? Because for a strong, independent woman, Windy freaking Corduroy. Yes. For loyalist Seuss. He is awesome. He was like my favorite character. I really liked him. Wendy and Mabel are also very awesome characters. Dipper I enjoyed, but I usually lean more towards the fun-loving characters. Or slightly kicktail characters. Yeah, but it also depends on who you can identify with. I mean, that's why some series make characters so bland, so that anyone can project themselves onto the characters. Why did I suddenly want to cough and say Twilight? Kinda. Maybe. Can't fully judge slash condemn without reading. So yeah. can only partially judge slash condemn. Yeah, and I've seen enough of the movies to go, I'm not really that interested. No, but there were aspects in each character that you could identify with, which made them all really relatable. We saw everyone had motives. Stan wasn't just this two-bit con artist. He had an overarching plan and reasons for what he did and had things that mattered to him and things that he would not do and lines that he would not cross, which makes him a much more interesting, redeemable character than your standard villain type or the crabby uncle guardian caretaker of whatever capacity that you often see in a series where kids are shipped off. Even in the Disney franchise, like uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. And I actually have another question for you. After watching the entire series, what's your favorite episode? Hmm, I thought this one would be obvious. Why would this one be obvious? Because there were so many awesome episodes. The first one with Bill Cipher. The zombies. I thought you would automatically jump to Summerween. Since you're a big fan of Halloween. Well, that was also an awesome episode, but it didn't have overarching story elements as much as the other ones do. Hmm. So, while I was a huge fan of the episode, it didn't do as much to continue the ongoing overall arching story of the series as other episodes did. Hmm. I see your point. So, the series. That's your favorite episode. The series. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's my favorite episode. It's called Gravity Falls. <laughs> uh, I also love the little epilogue in the credits where they showed what happened afterwards and they showed other summers, but they also ended with them still on the bus. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, though, that the Wendy in the credits was still wearing her hat, not Dipper's. So, shall we do our outro? Think anyone's still here to hear it? <laughs> There's probably somewhere out there. Sasami-chan? Fan of the gourmet? Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody? Anybody? <laughs> Hello? Click the like button if you've made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, thank you for hearing our ramblings on Gravity Falls Season 2. Episodes 15 and 17 through 20. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, if my goodness you're still here, thank you. All the usuals, subscribe, like, comment, share. If you want to check out more of Lux's art, you can find it on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Support the channel financially. Click links. They, they lead to shopping and uh, donations via Amazon, not affiliated with us, Patreon, not a sponsor of us, and coffee, a nice place to leave a tip. Thank you, and come again.